and them sisters. Like, comment, and subscribe. All right, guys, so starting with the fish here, we've cleaned it out and now we're rinsing it off. We're going to fillet it flat and then season it with the recipe that we have in the description box below before we bake the fish. And then we're going to cook the seasoned fish at 350 degrees Fahrenheit for about 45 minutes to an hour depending on the size of the fish. And our fish have been cooked. They're fully cooked now. We're going to take it out of the oven. This has been an, an hour uh, later. All right, and we're now starting on the bananas. So these are actually cooking bananas, but you can use plantains or any other bananas that you'd like. So you want to just rip them, and you're going to cut off the ends, just like so. And these are more on the green side, but I'll be showing you some seasonings that I use to make them more sweet. So you're going to do that to all of the bananas. And you're going to cut it in half and just take away the skin. Now after doing that, you'll put it in a medium sized pod, just like the one that I have. And we'll also be using one can of coconut milk. Any brand will do. Now you want to go ahead and stir it and then pour it into the pot. Just kind of make sure everything's underneath the milk. And now we'll bring it to the stove and we're going to set it at about medium high heat and then I'll be adding about an eighth of a teaspoon of sea salt. the spoon ready and I'll also be adding a half a tablespoon of cane sugar now you can make this more sweet or less sweet and you'll be cooking this for about 10 to 15 minutes alrighty and starting with the taro here I've taken off the skin and I've sliced it up and I'm going to steam it in this rice cooker for 15 minutes. I know the screen will say 10 minutes, but I actually did an additional 5 minutes afterwards to make sure they were soft enough when I have to pound them at the end. Alright, and our taro have been fully cooked and we are ready to pound them taro. You're going to need half a cup of coconut milk and some virgin, extra virgin olive oil and a large Ziploc bag along with a mixing bowl and a potato masher. And then first I'm going to go ahead and coat the mixing bowl with some olive oil or you can also use vegetable oil as well. And after I coat it, I'm going to go ahead and add the taro and just start mashing them first. Traditionally, these, uh, this recipe you only... You only have to pound it, but since we don't have a traditional pounder, we're just going to mash them first and then transfer them into the Ziploc and pound them, and you will see that process in a few seconds, in a few minutes. And to help the taro mash ease much easier, we're just going to add a little bit of the coconut milk that we have on the side. And then just continue the same process until you have mashed all of your taro.
and then I'm going to be adding a little bit of sugar for the taste. I'm going to add about half a tablespoon. Uh, usually this recipe calls for actually maybe a half cup of, of sugar, but I used a little bit here. And then I'm going to add a little bit more of olive oil and mash it one last time before I transfer it into the bag. Alright, so before I do transfer the mashed taro into the bag, I'm going to go ahead and coat it with some extra virgin olive oil to avoid the taro from sticking to the bag. So how I do that is I just drop the olive oil into the bag and then spread it with my hands, with my fingers. So the bag is ready, so we're going to go ahead and start our pounding process. And then you're going to go ahead and transfer all of the taro into that one bag. And then we're going to zip it up and then start pounding it with the olive oil bottle because it is hard and heavy. After that, you're going to go ahead and go in with some rolling pin and just roll it over again to make sure you get rid of all, uh, any lumps. And then the last step, I'm just going to go in and just um, kind of press on it while it's still in the Ziploc bag of course just to make sure check for lo any lumps and then I'm gonna make sure to mash them or use the rolling pin to get rid of them and as you can see here I'm going in with my fingers and I found some lumps so I'm just getting rid of that Alright, and now we're on to shaping our uh, taro, so you're going to need some saran wrap for this step. And then I'm going to go ahead and start off with adding the taro onto the saran wrap. And um, I'm going to be using a scoop here, which is actually about half a cup. And so I ended up using two scoops per serving, so that's a total of one cup per both seat. And then just fold it over and start shaping it with your hand. And this is the final look. This is how you want your bone seat to look like. So this one here is the hand-shaped version. And as you can see here, I also have rect a flat rectangular one as well because I used a Spamasubi mold. But if you have cookie cutters, that will also work as well. 
But I prefer the hand-shaped ones because my grandma used to make them like this when I was little. So it's very special to me. So. So for the smaller one, it only I only needed about half cup. So the rectangular one is half cup, and the handmade one would be a one cup of tarot. Alright, so we're just going to fold this up and that concludes this uh, process. So we're all done and we are ready to eat, guys. Be sure to check out the mukbang portion of the video. We hope you guys enjoyed it and we'll see you guys very soon.